Okay, today it's time for uh, breeding jack-in-the-pulpits or cobra lilies, and this is something we do to create new varieties as we go out and we cross the male and the female. Erisemas provide a little different uh, difficulty than other plants because erisemas can be male one year, female the next year, male the next year, female the next year. So they're sort of the original transsexual plants. Uh, you never can tell till you go out there what you're going to have each year. So let's look. So the first thing we're looking for is a male to get the pollen. So we, we look inside each flower. And when you do this enough, you can actually begin to tell by before you look. Now there's a female and I'm going to show you in a minute what I'm looking at and there's a male okay so first thing we do is dissect the flower so here's my male so we're going to come in and get rid of all this because all this part does is just create a, a place for insects to come okay so we've got rid of that so all we have left now is the sexual organ all right so if you look down in here we're going to Okay, see I've already spilling pollen. See, that's the purple. In some cases, most erysemas is white, but on erysema ringens, the pollen is purple. And then I'm going to dump it out in my hand. So there's all my erysema sperm. So that's ready to go. Now, to tell the difference between a female, I just happen to have looked, and this is a female. Now, normally I would save all these, but just for demonstration, we're going to show the difference between the male and the female. So when you peel that back, at the bottom, let's compare here male and female, you see the difference. So the female is the green one, that's receptive, that's where the pollen goes, and then on the right, these are the male parts, and that produces the pollen. So this would only be good if I left it on the plant and I put other pollen on there. So I've got my plant now, got my pollen dumped out. And now let's go find a female of a different type. Now, if I wanted to self this, I would have crossed the two together. I would have taken this pollen and put it on that female. But I'm looking to actually make a hybrid today. So let's go find a willing female. We've got a female here, so let's check. Let's go in here and, and look and see what we've got. And sure enough, that's a female. So I'm going to strip away now all the pretty parts that we as humans like. Now generally, the way you can tell, erysemas, when they're young and weak, they're males. Only when they become strong enough to reproduce do they switch over and become females. And then if they set seed, that takes so much energy, the next year they'll revert back to a weak male. So we've got our, uh, get the leaves out of the way. Now this is already a cross that we made years earlier using the North Carolina native Erysema triphylum and Erysema ringens, the one we just looked at from, the, uh, from China with the hood. So this is a hybrid itself. So we're going to put an extra dose of ringens back on it and we want to give it two parts ringen and one part triphylum and see what that looks like. Now, very few people do ever seem across this, so this is, this is all pretty much new territory. So we take a brush, and these are good art brushes, and we just brush up some pollen, and then we just gradually dust it on. If you're not careful, it'll all blow away. And what you want to do is cover all the stamens all the way around. If you just cover them on one side, it'll often abort. So it's like painting a picture. So we go all the way around, top to bottom, and just paint all that pollen on. And in between each cross, you want to clean your brush. You can do that with water or alcohol. That'll get rid of it. So get all that good pollen. There's a lot of pollen. Many times you'll have just a tiny bit of pollen. And it's very frustrating because you come out, you think you're going to make a great cross, and either the male's not ready or the female's not ready, or it's rain and the pollen's no good. So you, you, everything's got to be just right to be able to make that happen. And so once we get that, we will then make a tag. And we use these very common tags. You can buy these uh, online. And we will write on there what we've crossed. And the key is to use a waterproof, lightproof pen. Um, it's no good if you use a pen that's waterproof if it's not lightproof. Okay, so we use Deco Color paint pens. These are made out of paint and about worn this one out. Extra fine ones. So this is our cross of a triphylum. 
So we're going to write trifylum, and this is a particular one that we're going to give initials to. And we've already crossed it on Rengens, and then we're going to cross it again, and we put Rengens. And then we always like to put the dates on there. So today is end of March, so we put our dates. And then we hang that so that we know this has been done. So it doesn't matter what comes by after that. Once that pollen tube starts to grow, you've got your cross. And then what will happen, we'll watch this uh, for the next uh, several months. It depends on what the parent is. Rengens typically doesn't mature until October. Some will mature as early as July. So each one is very different. But let's look at one we did a couple weeks ago and see what that's going to look like as it develops.